Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. North Dakota is wheat country. And back in the mid-1960s, what farmers really needed in big, wide-open spaces like this was a whole lot of pulling power. A big step forward came in 1966 when a rugged, dependable diesel 100 drawbar horsepower tractor debuted on the market, manufactured by a Canadian company called Versatile. This is what started it all. Like, uh, you know, in 66, they made uh, roughly 125 tractors, gas and diesel. And in 67, they made around, uh, it was over 1,000. And it just kept going from there. The reason for Versatile's tremendous success was that the four-wheel drive D100 was a third of the cost of comparable tractors from John Deere, International, and Case. As a matter of fact, its $10,000 price tag was about the same as two-wheel drive tractors then on the market. It was kind of the right tractor at the right time, and Versatile really became a successful company because of these. Everyone who knew, knew Versatile, and those who knew lived in the upper Midwest. Matt's father, Darrell, was a versatile dealer during its heyday. Believe me, they had the lion's share in, uh, in Western Canada and the Northern States. They're easy to sell, put it that way. We, we sold piles of them back in 73, 74, all through the 70s. A component-built tractor, the D100, featured a four-speed funk transfer case. 363 cubic inch Ford industrial engine and 12 speed Spicer transmission. Do we hear tractor fever? It's got uh, 12 forward. You've got three on your main, four on your auxiliary here. So it makes up 12. And then, of course, you've got four reverse. So you've got a number of speeds available, which made it pretty easy to use. And it was a lot more flexible than the competitors' rigid frames. On four-wheel drive tractors, there's two different styles as far as you know, turning. Um, you've got your, your rigid frames, which would be like the cases and the internationals back in this time frame. And then you've got uh, the articulating style four-wheel drive. And that's, that's an, this is an example of that. Where it articulates in the center, and that's where you get your, your maneuverability. And I, I guess I've used both, and, and I prefer this style, the articulated, because it's, it is a little easier, at least in my mind, as far as operating. Yes, sir, the Versatile lived up to its name. It was handy as heck for big-time Plains wheat farmers and a great way to cover a whole lot of ground in a hurry. And from his youngest days, Matt Swenson had an eye for a top-quality tractor just like this one. Ever since I was 10 years old, my brother would talk about this uh, 100 Versatile that my dad had back in the 70s. And he said, I'd love to find one someday. And uh, we just kind of talked about it from time to time over the next few years and saying, you know, let's try to find one. And uh, so we started making a few phone calls. Basically me, I've, I made a lot of phone calls and talked to a lot of different guys. It took a little doing, but Nathan finally located the tractor Matt had dreamed of owning. This V100 was found in Saskatchewan, and although it was out in the elements, it was well cared for. I hate to even call the restoration because it was uh, simply, for the most part, it was just uh, strip the uh, paint off and, and repaint it. It was, it was really that straightforward. Yeah, it's first style red, and uh, you know the rims are the they're the right color yellow. We couldn't get decals anywhere, so so that took a little work to to find a set that we could. Uh, make some patterns off of, and, and I think we nailed it dead on. My brother's kind of picky about wanting to make the tractors look as original as possible. When it comes to classic tractors, being original is a great thing, from the paint to the decals to the color of the grill. But to keep this Big Red Brute's exhaust system looking top-notch, Matt decided to be a little versatile. One of my pet peeves when I look at restored tractors a lot of times they'll just paint the manifold or, or not do anything at all and you know of course if they painted it it's bubbling off or, or if they didn't do anything it's rusty. Uh, I have a good friend that uh, does ceramic coating and that's what I had him do. He ceramic coated the complete exhaust system. 
the attention to detail shows. And no doubt Matt's pretty darn proud of his 1966 versatile D100. In fact, all the Swinsons are. And together, they're preserving another intriguing piece of agricultural history. Gotten to be a family hobby collecting these tractors. Yeah, these, of course, are our favorites. It keeps us out of trouble. We probably spend a little money. We probably spend a little more money than we should, but uh, that kind of goes with the territory.